Look, the IEC has been a complete disaster in this election. Uh, it was our biggest opponent that wasn't on the ballot paper. And I think they're going to be responsible at the end of the day for at least 1% of, uh, of, of vote with a vote share for us. Long queues, voters repelled, turned away, unable to exercise their democratic rights. You've got one job. You've got five years to prepare for it. And this is the omni-shambles that you produce. And I think there needs to be a higher degree of accountability by the IEC for what has happened. Because uh, you can't be spending this amount of money. You can't tell us you're election ready. When concerns are raised, you, you brush those aside and say, no, no, it's all fine. And then we see the omni-shambles that happened on election day. Uh, we are considering, I've got a, uh, my attorneys here, we are busy looking at a variety of options uh, because I think that the IEC are, you know, for all parties, have caused significant damage to our, our share of the votes. And it cannot be business as usual for the IEC after this election. We gave them another chance after the shambles in the 2021 election, which we believe cost us the Nelson and Dela Bay metro. It was the same long queues, voters being fed up and leaving the queues. We're not going to let them get away again with a second on these shambles. We need to sort the IEC out. They need to be fit for purpose. They need to be able to do their job properly. And we cannot ever, ever have a situation like we had. And I want to thank those voters who stayed in the queues during the course of these very difficult uh, 24 hours of voting. Thank you for staying in the queues. And I promise you this, we are going to hold the IEC accountable for the eight, six, five hours that people have to stand in the queue to vote. And for all of those South Africans, never, never, and never again will we allow the IEC to go into an election uh, as ill-prepared and, and shambolic as clearly this situation was uh, in this election. How would you rate your performance as PA leader? We've grown. I think that's good. Uh, we've won significant support back. We've won new voters. I'm very, very pleased with that. And I, I hope you're going to be all asking Mr. Ramaphosa and Mr. Malema and all the people whose parties have declined, um, you know, what, 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 how they rate their leadership. Um, what you want as a political party is to grow. We've grown. Um, I've been very pleased with the results, and I think it provides us a good springboard for the 2026 local government elections, where we look to take more metros away uh, from the ANC and to complete uh, the electoral demolition of the ANC's majority, wherever it may exist. So you would you. describe your job as safe at this stage? Pardon? Would you, would you say your job is safe at this stage? based on the, uh, the well, provisional outcome. Well, of course, of course my job is safe, but he has grown. <laughs> All of you in the media wrote us off. You said I was going to get 17% of the vote. You said the DNA yeah, could yeah. never grow the DA. I've got more black votes than Mr. Maimani got when he was a leader. I think the DA is very happy with my performance. I'm happy with my performance. I'm very happy with my party's performance. And we are strong. We're ready to contest in the 2026 election. And we're ready to keep growing because that's what it's all about in politics. We're going to keep growing. Mr. Tim Hazen, Mr. Tim Hazen. Are you happy with that? I'm very happy. We've been able to do a number of things. We've been able to consolidate our base. We're able to win back support. But if I look at our growth amongst black South Africans, it's doubled from the last election. And South Africa has a party now, the DA, which is able to draw support from all voter communities in the country. If I look to the party to the left and right of me, they're able to draw from very limited pools of voters, and they're virtually monochromatic. The DA is really now a party that has grown to represent a wide variety of South Africans and their interests. Do you think the growth of the DA is enough at this stage? What do you think about that? Some people w would have wanted the DA maybe to grow more. But I mean, that's a bit of an unfair question, because mm. saying, I, you know, I would love the DA to have got 50% plus one, mm. but it's not a realistic situation. What you want in an election is growth, and what has been delivered here is growth. Um, one of the media houses after 2019 proudly produced a front page that said the death of the DA. Well, those reports of our death have been greatly exaggerated. Here we are, after an election, having grown from the 2019 election, going back with more seats in Parliament than ever before, uh, and being able to be a party that is now a centrifugal force around the future lay of the land in South Africa. I think that's a very, very good outcome for a party like the DA. And, of course, we will continue now to grow as more and more voters put their trust in us. There were a lot of people in the media who were telling us that Ryzen Zanti was going to replace the DA as the official opposition. The EFF was going to knock us out as the official opposition. That Bosa was now the new kid on the block that was going to take votes. I think if you look at the scoreboard there, the truth of this election is that the tide has gone out 
and now all the uh, it's for everyone to see uh, who is wearing swimming trunks and who is not and the DA is wearing a very very bright blue pair of swimming trunks which we intend to parlay now into some form of influence over the next couple of weeks and months. M M Mr. Sinezen, do you feel uh, the ongoing genocide in Gaza has had any impact uh, on this year's election, particularly with the DA? No, I don't think it has. I think our position has been rational and reasonable from the beginning. We've said very clearly from the beginning of the conflict that we believe in a two-state solution with an independent, sovereign, unoccupied Palestine living next to a secure Israel. Um, we have said we respect the outcomes and findings of the ICJ uh, because we're a party of the rule of law. Uh, I however maintain that if we want to see peace in the region, we've got to stop the bombardment. I don't think it's going to release the hostages. We need to focus on getting those hostages released. We need to get people around the table to enter into peace talks so that we can start to find a lasting solution for that region. I think it's in the interest not only of that region but for the world uh, to have an area, a, a two-state solution there that brings peace. And I'm really, really hoping that we will be able to move to a massive de-escalation there, that we can get those hostages home, but that we are able to build a lasting peace in that region. Obviously, I'm also disappointed. Um, you know, when you actually say told us that they were going to bring 10.56 percent to the table when we met at Emperor's Palace, it doesn't look like that's going to to materialise. But obviously, um, it is disappointing. But as I said, it's still early days. The metros have still got to come in, and I think the NPC parties largely do better in those metro areas. So I think we need to to wait for those final results to come in. But I think that keeping a strong group of people who come together around values and principles is going to be invaluable as we navigate the choppy waters that lie ahead of us in terms of coalition politics. We've built up a relationship of trust with the parties there. We've been working together well. Uh, we've been able to synthesize policies. There's a good values fit. And I think it would be a shame to just let the NPC fall by the wayside. We've got a local government election coming in uh, two years' time. And I think it would make more sense for us to look at how we expand and grow the rational center in South Africa rather than just simply abandoning it. So um, I still see um, great, a great future for the multi-party charter and its parties, either in its current configuration or in a new configuration, as I say, with other parties that, that decide to join that rational center. Have you received Thanks, any update, Mr. Stine, in terms of the concerns raised around President Ramaphosa's um, address to the nation? No, I, I spoke to our lawyers this morning. Um, He's filed papers to oppose, and we'll obviously uh, pursue those in the court. John, yeah. how do you celebrate two or three percentage of growth when the ruling party has lost such a big margin? Uh, how can we celebrate that as a growth when the, the ruling party has already lost 10 We celebrate percent. growth. That's exactly the answer to your question yourself. We celebrate growth. Thank you. How can you 